Ahead of Saturday's governorship election in Edo State, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has ordered the restriction of movement from 11.59 p.m. on Friday to 6 p.m. on Saturday. The IG stated that the order was informed by the need to prevent the circulation of illegal arms and hard drugs and to halt the movement of political thugs and other criminally minded individuals. Also, President Mohamed Bukhari has spoken about the election warning against violence. We'll be discussing all of that. We'll start first off with Plus TV Africa's senior correspondent, Amadeen Uyi, who is already in Benin ahead of tomorrow's polls. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program. Let's get an on-the-spot assessment of preparations ahead of the election from you. Uh, I think uh, for the elections, uh, Edo State residents are ready for the polls. INEC, on its part, has also assured that it is ready for the polls. Earlier today, when we visited the INEC head, headquarters, the Edo State's headquarters, the, the state's headquarters of INEC in Edo State, there was a lot of activities. We spoke to the head of voter uh, public education, uh, Timidi Wariowe. And he said that uh, INEC is ready for the post. In fact, he said that INEC has appraised logistics, uh, logistics challenges in the past. And as he was speaking to me at that moment, INEC, INEC had already deployed its essential staff. INEC had already deployed uh, voting materials to the local government headquarters. And INEC was, at that point in time, strategizing for uh, a last minute, uh, last uh, interaction which, with its staff on ground. So INEC on its part said it is ready. The Edo State residents say they are ready. And we are hoping that just as you said, with the police on ground and with uh, their plans to ensure that uh, about three uh, policemen are tied to each polling booth, then we, we hope that it will be a peaceful election. Uh, there's been a lot of concern about security um, ahead of the polls. So what, is, from your observation, is the level of compliance to the IGP ordered restriction of movement? We saw a very high level of security uh, around the INEC uh, facility. The IGP said about 33,000 personnel have been deployed for the elections. And if you go to look at elections in Edo State, traditionally, Edo is not one of those states that you say election is a do or die affair. Uh, the residents are not ready. If you judge from the past, they have not proven in the past that they are ready to die for any politician. So it is expected, it is hoped that if the, the police on their own part can curtail the movement of non-essential staff, when I mean non-essential staff, I mean INEX staff moving around, there are essential staff who will check the implements being used, the card readers and the rest, then also journalists who have been accredited to cover the polls, because not even all journalists have been accredited. INEC said as of last week, they had over 600 applications to cover the elections. So you can see that the, the election, uh, there's a national interest in the polls. And out of that, over 600 people that uh, applied to cover the election, INEC could not even give everybody accreditation. So if on those journalists who are accredited to cover the elections uh, with INEC uh, ad hoc staff, then with security agencies trying to maintain law and order, if only those set of people are allowed to move on election duty, you see that the talks cannot move from one polling booth to another because the talks who have to move around have to use the roads and they have okay. to pass police checkpoints. And so if the police is ensures that even because uh, earlier this morning, uh, one of the staff of TMG said that sometimes 
thugs dress in police or, or military fatigues and move around and there, there, use there seem to painted be, vehicles. There seem to be a lot of... Um, there, there seem to be... stop from moving. Amadine. There seem to be a lot of preparation, yeah. uh, preparation rather, ahead of the polls by our security agencies. We, we did uh, hear earlier in the news that they've been um, at the preparation stage for almost six months now. So doesn't that, you know, sort of uh, engender some sort of confidence that this time uh, security agencies will have things under control? And such things that you highlighted, the possibility on, on, of, you know, thugs getting hold of security um, officials' uh, um, attire will not occur. Unfortunately, that is not the case because if you look at past elections, the security agencies have come out to read the riot act. You saw the general elections. You saw what happened in Lagos. It was in public view. The video stranded everywhere where you see thugs going to polling stations to de disrupt the voting process, scatter poly uh, voting materials, and yet one or two policemen there. You definitely cannot have only three policemen trying to face up to 15 or 20 thugs who are fully and heavily armed. So in the past, the security agencies have given the assurances that polls will go on as normal, but we have all seen the outcome. But like I say, Edo State is a peculiar state. No, but Amadine, we have let's see a, if we can stay with royal, what is on the ground. In Amadine, Edo State, the Oba of Benin, who the Amadine, Edos, can you hear me? They respect very well. Can Hello. you hear me? I I'm trying to ask that. Let's see if we can stay with what is on the ground. I mean, every past ele every election that come and go, something must be learned from it that will be embedded in the uh, current process. So what you were seeing on the ground, you said earlier that there's been, uh, you saw a, the presence of a lot of security um, officials. Um, maybe perhaps we will see more than three officials at polling units. Isn't that possible from what you've seen on the ground? I, I don't think it's possible to have more than three, uh, more than three officials per polling unit except you want to deploy uh, pol the whole policemen around the country to just cover one state. We all know that uh, the, 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 the way to go in this post is that if uh, the politicians know that the process cannot be manipulated, they will not waste their time trying to manipulate it. And then they will, a security uh, personnel will not be deployed unnecessarily to go and stop politicians from having a few day in subverting the process. Okay, but before I let you like go, I, Amadine, I uh, so we can bring before, in... I was saying before I ended... Okay. The, hello, I was saying before I ended, the Oba of Benin had intervened. I think that even gives the citizens more confidence because they believe that the two major uh, candidates in the two major political parties are all from Benin. And if the Oba that does not inter interfere in election comes out to say, see, come to my palace, that anybody who tries, to, uh, who tries to unleash violence on innocent voters is going to pay for it. Those who we have spoken, it, it will surprise you to, say, to, to know that up to two or three, four or five people have come out to say, because the Oba has intervened, they believe the polls Will, uh, will be violence free. Okay, so there is that um, hope uh, Amadine, that the uh, Oba has intervened, time. the politicians will not have a field day. But it does not stop us from expecting that the police will do their duty. We okay. are hoping that the police will live according to their word, uh, meet up their obligations, and ensure that talks do not roam freely to disrupt the entire process. All right, Amadine, um, any validation? for you so far to allegations of vote buying? Have you seen any instance that suggests there is some validity uh, to that? As of this moment, there is no proof from what we have seen on ground. Uh, we know that uh, these rhetorics will be thrown in the public space because the politicians expect that Nigerian politicians will be politicians. But INEC has also come out to say, see, we are going to move against vote buying. I think in the past, INEC, even at a point in time, tried to involve the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Uh, but at this time, 
Anybody saying there will be vote buying, there's no proof. It is till tomorrow we get to the field, observe the process, then we can tell whether of a truth there is vote buying. Remember that in the past, not one party can be singled out for vote buying. All the major political parties have been involved in vote buying one way or the other. On election day, they distribute wads of cash. But tomorrow, we'll be able to verify once we are on the field if okay. vote buying is actually taking place. All right. Thank you very much, Amadine Uyi, um, Plus TV Africa's serial, senior correspondent on the ground in Benin City for us. Uh, we will be in touch with you consistently through the night and, of course, tomorrow. You have a long day ahead of you. Do take care and catch some rest. Thank you, Felicity. All right. Okay, we shall, we shall now have um, the program's manager, Yaga, Paul James, uh, joining us. Thank you very much for your patience uh, thus far. Um, let's start with your reaction to uh, the reports from the field by our correspondent there. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, so um, there are, uh, I mean, some elements of consistency in what he has reported and with what we have also have seen on ground. But just to also draw back a little bit to say our engagement started uh, right from July, where we started observing the pre-election environment up until this moment. And we had consistently also been reporting on our findings from the pre-election observation. It is uh, sad for me to say um, that um, we have reduced election to a one week I fear in this country. Yesterday, we had a show of force that happened by the, uh, by the police force and also um, with got assurances this morning from the uh, DIG uh, in, in charge of research that his men are, 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 are ready and um, just to try to inspire confidence in the electorates to go out and participate. We should not also forget that this show of force mostly happened just within the capital cities. What happened to the local governments? What happened to, the, to, to other communities? And also to say this is based on the fact that we have seen a lot of uh, elements of electoral violence that played out in the build up to the election. Yaga Africa released a report uh, in, this, uh, in, the, uh, week of, in the second week of August where we captured that in 13 of uh, the 18 local governments in, uh, in Edo, there are prevalence of uh, uh, pre election violence. And we, we fear that if that continues, if that is allowed to linger, it could affect participation in the election. And this is an election that we, uh, we must not also forget that we have only 78% of registered voters participate. This is based on the fact that INEC had distributed voters' card to, uh, I mean, INEC did not distribute voters' card because, uh, uh, because of the prevalence of uh, the COVID-19. All right, uh, let's talk about the IG's order um, to restrict movement. And the, the reason for this is to prevent the free flow and circulation of you know, illicit arms and hard drugs and checkmate a movement of political thugs. Uh, will this be enough deterrent in your thinking? What ways um, are they likely to flout this order? And how can security agencies, you know... Um, Stop them, basically. What has happened by the police can also work both ways. Okay, uh, but, I don't know if I don't know if you got the question I asked you about the restriction of movement. I'm asking, do you think it will be enough deterrent for those who are determined to sabotage the um, process? And what are the likely loopholes uh, that might occur? And how can security agencies stop? and enforce the restriction, stop them and enforce restriction? It will work in some sense, but I also feel politicians will always come up with their dreams as to how to beat the system. I observed the Edo election in 2016, and that was also the election that in some parts of the state, we saw a lot of movements of, uh, um, um, we, we saw a lot of vehicular movement within the town, ambulances, and in some of these ambulances, it will interest you to know that you might think that they are conveying sick people to the hospital, but it turns out for some of these, you see political talks cramped in ambulances, and then they are ferrying them from one location to another location. So I, I, I think um, for me, to a large extent, it will help to cop this, but then we also expect to see that deployment is total and enforcement is total. We are all witnesses to what had what happened in Koji in the 2019 election. 
where for most part of the state we did not see security deployment that even that was and uh, 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 that that was also a confirmation to the fact that some of the policemen that were seen at the uh, uh, during the Kogi election were fake policemen so i expect that uh, uh, police will be true to their words and ensure that they do deploy and that the deployment is total to every polling unit. Okay, uh, let me ask you this. Your, your group says it would expose any irregularities, especially if the announced results have been manipulated and do not match the polling unit results. They also say that if the official results announced reflect the polling unit um, votes, um, you, Yaga, will confirm it. How will this complement efforts that has been expended so far to promoting a free, fair, and peaceful process? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is because we will be deploying a time-tested methodology to observe the election. It is called the parallel vote tabulation, the PVT methodology. It has been used in over 50 countries and in Africa in over 15 countries. Yaga Africa has deployed it in seven elections and in the 2019 presidential election and in the recent Kodia and Bayelsa governorship election. For the Kodia election, for instance, Yaga Africa did not verify the outcome of the election because we thought, we think the election was compromised and did not meet the standards of credible election. Bayelsa election also fall in that bracket because in Bayelsa, we got reports that in 24% of polling units, election did not hold. In one local government, for election did not hold in 51% in of polling units. And yet returns were made with, from some of those locations. We exposed those infractions. We drew the attention of the uh, uh, respective uh, organs of government to, to the infraction we saw. And, and so that's also the assurance that we are giving the people of a those state that if there is any manipulation of the process, we will expose the manipulation. All right. But Mr. if the results at the polling unit are consistent with what we saw, then at the end, when INEX declares the results of the election, we will then verify the outcome of the election. All right, Mr. Paul James. Thank you very much for joining us on Plus Politics and sharing your thoughts ahead of the elections tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate it. You be safe out there. Yeah. All right. Thank you for staying with us thus far. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, I'll give my take. Please don't go away. My only thought tonight is a gentle reminder to everyone watching that there are no permanent friends, enemies, or even brothers in the game of politics. The alliances of politicians are often fickle at best. This is the time to pay less heed to the whims of our politicians who pursue their own personal aims and look more to the people. Who will best serve the interest of Edo State? The people, I mean. Thank you for watching the program tonight. Do remember to follow us on all our social media platforms and share your reflections on our programs. We'll be happy to hear from you. Until next time, be well and stay safe.